Beautiful. Um, uh, my driver's license says North Pole, so uh, I went and rented a car yesterday and the guy says, that for real? I said, yeah, that's for real. And I know Santa Claus too. <laughs> so now you got here someone from the North Pole who knows Santa Claus is going to preach to people today. <laughs> It's a beautiful day, beautiful, wonderful day to be here and, and to be able to share the Word of God. I want to look in the book of Jonah today uh, and see what God has for us. Very simple book uh, and one of the oldest books out there we know, uh, not just here in the, in the Bible, but among history. One of the oldest books out there, and it's tremendous. Uh, a few weeks ago, my grandson came over to our house. We usually, uh, together, our family has Sunday dinner together. The kids, grandkids all get together and we come to our house, have Sunday dinner. And I said to my, my grandson, what did you learn at church today? And uh, he said, Jonah, Jonah, he's four years old, Jonah. And I said, well, what did you learn about Jonah? He got consequences. <laughs> He got the main point of the message. <laughs> There's consequences. And so this morning, I'm going to look here just down to verse number 10. And uh, we'll try to cover as much as we can in the time that we have here. Now the word of the Lord, of Jonah came unto, came unto Jonah, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and, uh, where? And arise and go to Nineveh that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. It's a wicked city. And Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go to the, with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And, but the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was likened to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone into the sides of the ship to lay down, and he was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, and we perish not. And they said, Everyone to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil has come upon us? And what is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? And, why is thy, and what is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew. I fear God. The Lord, I mean, fear God, uh, fear the Lord, the God of Hebrew, heaven, which made the sea and the dry land. Then were there men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, What hast thou done? For, thy, for the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. May God add his blessings to his word. I'm just going to ask, take a moment of prayer. And you pray this, that whatever God speaks to your heart about, you're going to do what God tells you to do this morning. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this simple truth from a book that even a child, a four-year-old, can understand. Lord, I pray that you would help us today as we look into the Word of God that you would give us hope in our heart. Lord, you'd give us faith in Thee. And Lord, that you would encourage us as we encourage ourselves in the Word of God. Keep the devil from stealing the Word. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. And amen and amen. Jonah was living a life on the run. You know, he didn't want to go where? He didn't want to go where God wanted him to go. And you see where God wanted him to go. You see that in the, 
uh, and, uh, and uh, um, Jonah the Ammonite saying unto rise and go to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was not the place you would want to go. Neither do I want to be a missionary to Medina right now, do I? If you know what Medina is, it's the head of another religion. And if you are in the Middle East, and I'd be, I'm sure I'd be very welcome, wouldn't I? Tell them I'm an independent fundamental Baptist. But Jonah was the same way. He didn't want to go down there. He wanted to go where he wanted to go. And like many people, he was saying no to God. Friend, that's dangerous to say no to God. He became a double-minded man. On one hand, he, he was wanting God's blessings, but on his terms. That's what we want today, isn't it? We want God's blessings, but we want to dictate the terms that God bless us with. And sometimes God just may give you what you want. Yeah, and you may not want what you're going to get. And so uh, Jonah, he got what he wanted, didn't he, for a while. <laughs> he got away from God and got on that ship, but he didn't want what he got afterwards down in the belly of the whale. He gave God lip service, but not his heart to God. God needs some Christians who give him their whole heart, not just a half a heart. God wants Christians who want to serve him, not on their terms, but on God's terms. And when God comes knocking at your door, you don't dictate the terms. And Jonah was trying to dictate the terms. He stopped being dependent upon God, and he fell prey to human reasoning. Friends, I want the divine reasoning of the Word of God. And sometimes I want to dictate terms that God's supposed to do. I want to give God instructions, get this COVID thing over with and get people back to work. Yeah, but God's got some other terms here. And don't miss, don't miss what God's trying to teach you through these difficult times. I'm afraid our nation has looked at it as a political maneuver. Some people look at it as the biggest lie out there, but those who lost a loved one don't look at it that way. And friends, we got to look at it from God's terms. Jonah stopped being dependent upon God and fell prey to human reasoning. He had a false perception of God. For a lot of people, God is somebody up there, out there somewhere, and a lot of people said there is no God. You go up in the city north of us here, the big, big city, and you wonder how many people really believe there's a God. Yeah. Millions of people. And you wonder how many people really believe there is a God. And it's not that God didn't show himself real. Man tried to make God in man's own image, and we rejected God's image. Is there no fear before your eyes? When my grandson said, Jonah, he got consequences. Is there no fear before your eyes that God does have some automatic consequences out there when you reject him. Yeah. When you take away a moral compass, there's automatic consequences that comes to a nation. And there's automatic consequences when people who know God don't want to live for God. Jonah fell prey to human reason, and he had a false perception of who God is. I'm not trying to define who God is but many times we've made God into our own image. Jonah fell prey to human reasoning and he had a false perception of God and then he paid the fare. Well, he paid the fare to get on the ship. Friends, when you pay to get on the ship away from God, it always costs you something, doesn't it? The world out there wants to legalize every kind of illegal drug, it seems like, out there. There's a fair to be paid. The world wants to de-exist God Almighty in our court system. They want to take one nation under God and take that out of there. You know, you think that's bad, but some of us want to live that way as if there was no God anyways. Jonah paid the fair, and he relied on failing provisions. <laughs> yeah. Because he spent his money and 
money is just a very failing provi provision to maybe take care of some immediate needs. But money is not the answer. Pouring more money into this thing isn't going to make it a whole lot better unless we get a moral compass. And Jonah, he didn't want to go to preach to those people. He said, I am going a different direction. Here's a man who calls himself a prophet, a preacher. But he soon found himself with a false perception of God, and he paid the fare thereof, and he relied on failed protection. What was his protection? A wooden ship. Where are you going today when you're trying to get away from God? You can hide your own self-consciousness, and you know you're not living where God wants you to be. You're not where God wants you in your life. You know that you could have done a whole lot more for God. And I'm looking at several people here today, and I'm sure that uh, your conscience will tell you something. Maybe you're not living for God. There's many people outside of here who know they're not living for God, and they don't care. Until God gets them in the fiery furnace and say, Lord, get me out of there, or Jonah was in the belly of the whale. Whether you believe that's figuratively or actually happened, I believe the Bible is literal. God can make a whale big enough to do something like that, and there's enough science to tell that. Jonah paid the fare and relied on failing provisions, and then he talked himself into a frail ship that was sinking, and he cared, and, and, and he didn't care about the people. Be careful what you say to yourself when things don't go the way you're planning. Do you have some plans? Yeah, I've got some plans how life was supposed to work out, and all of a sudden things didn't work out that way. Sickness came. Financial pressures came. Lost loved ones, loved ones have passed away. And you know, We want God on our terms, and we want God to serve us on our terms. That's the way Jonah wanted. He wanted life on his terms. And things didn't go the way he planned. This COVID thing is not something we plan for. But I fear that it could happen again and again because we know it was manufactured. Maybe by a disaster, maybe by plan, we don't know, but God knows. And God knows that, hey, God never never waste any bullets on anybody. <laughs> God wants us to learn, learn from, learn from this circumstances, learn from the hard times. Don't go running from God. This is a time our nation needs to turn back to God. You can talk yourself right out of God's best into the world's mess. Jonah wanted just about anything but to go God's direction <laughs> to that wicked city. He wanted to go his own way. He cared more about his own politics than God's plan. Friends, God does have a plan for us. It's right here. God has a blueprint for the humanity to live by right here. And man wants to go by his own plan. And Jonah, with a bad attitude, he talked himself into running from God's mission for his life. Be careful what you say to yourself in times of discouragement because you could talk yourself right out of God's best into the world's mess. When things don't go your way, you want to blame everybody else and say, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? Jonah became angry. He had self-pity. He became depressed. And eventually, he became suicidal. I've done a lot of counseling with the military. I've seen what PTSD does. I've talked with men with that. And I see suicide as often sometimes the only answer. Friends, that is never the answer. Suicide is the most selfish, self-centered act that you can find yourself into. But you can talk yourself into it when you talk yourself away from God. Jonah was talking himself awake, away from God. He made a decision that he knew was not God's will. How did Jonah get to this, this mess that he is in, down into the, the vomit of the belly of the whale? How did he get into that? How did you get where you are? How did some people in the world get in the mess and living out on the streets? 
up there in the Portland, some 40,000 people living on the streets. Must be the homeless capital. <laughs> uh, you know, I couldn't believe when I saw it, just driving down the streets, homeless tents everywhere. How did people get there? I, want, I just want to go down and ask them, what's your story that got you here? I'm sure it's going to be somewhere. They turned their back on God because there is hope in Jesus Christ. Jonah, how did he get where he was? I believe not, if there's three things I want to look at, Jonah distorted the problem. Where did they tell him to go? And arise and go to Nineveh. That was a wicked, wicked city. Some estimates have may have been up to 400,000 people there. It was not just no little, little tiny town. It was a wicked city. And yet uh, Jonah distorted the problem. He made it look a whole lot worse. Friends, don't worry about how. Settle the question, who told you to do that? Hear that? When God called someone to start a church here way back years and years ago, we didn't say how. We said who. And you got the who taken care of, God will take care of the how. But sometimes we distort the problem and say, I can never do this. God has chosen the simple things of this world to confound the wise. I like that verse. God chose the simple to confound the wise. And Jonah's got to the place where he distorted the problem. Friends, God is not limited by time. He sees things from a different perspective than you and I see it. Because God can see not only what's happening today, but God can see the fruit of what you're sowing in your life in the future. God can see the past. He can see the present. He can see the future. And Jonah, he didn't want to look at it things the way God wanted him. He was saying, how am I going to get out of this? I go down there, they're going to kill me. It's a wicked city. I don't want to go there. Yeah, Lord, why didn't you call me to be a missionary to Hawaii or someone like that? <laughs> I want to go there. Yeah. Friends, if you're outside, if you're in the nicest place on the earth, but you're outside of God's will, it'll be like being in the belly of the whale. And so often we want to go our own way. Friends, you can get discouraged when you stop looking at the way things God sees it. God sees things in a different time scale than you and I see things. Because God sees the end thereof as well as he sees the beginning. Someone asked me one time, they said, what is the key element to intelligent thinking? So I ask you the question this morning, what is the key element to thinking intelligently? You must always look at the end of something before you start something. What's the end thereof? And Jonah stopped looking at the end thereof. And he only saw what he wanted immediately right then and there. Friends, this morning, a couple of things to remember. Remember that God sees things when things don't go your way. You weren't planning on getting COVID. You did everything to do right and you didn't get it. Then somebody throws the mask off and goes out and goes anywhere he wants and never gets it. God sees the end and he sees the beginning. It's easy to get humanistic in your thinking today when you take God out of the picture. God sees things when things don't go your way. Number two, God is always up to something good in your life. Even when you don't see the good that he's doing, God is always up to something good. I may not understand what God's doing, but I know that God has something good for me and he's got something good for you, no matter what you're going through. God is up to something good. A good friend of mine, an attorney, David Gibbs, he was speaking up in Anchorage, Alaska. And they wanted to come up to Fairbanks. And if you've been to Anchorage and Fairbanks, that's not just next door to here to San Francisco. That's like going from here to Seattle <laughs> just to get there. And on many cases, dirt roads or icy roads. It's a long, long drive. And someone said, Dr. Gibbs, why don't you go with my friend? He has an airplane and he'll fly you up there. Oh, no, I'd like to see the scenery. No, that's a long way. You won't make it in time for service, and it'll take about four and a half hours, and we'll fly over some of those glaciers, and it's beautiful. 
If you've ever been to Alaska, it is one of the most beautiful places I can say I've been to. I love it when I can drive 400 miles and never see another person. Yeah, there's more, probably more people in, in, in this county than there is in all of the state of Alaska even. I love it. So David Gibbs decides, sure, maybe I ought to just take the airplane and they got a little small airplane and a little four-seater airplane. And they flew, took off from Anchorage, Alaska. If you've been to Anchorage, you, 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 you come in over the water and you take off and go up towards the mountains. There's mountains right close there. And so he took off, they got up over the mountains, started going north. And as they were flying along, there was a guy in the back seat and, and, and one of their friends who wanted to go to the conference and David Gibbs up front and the pilot. And as they were flying along, all of a sudden the pilot, like dead. And he shakes the guy, quit this joke. He shakes her again and nothing's happening. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. I don't know how to fly this plane. They're panicking. And so they grab the microphone and start yelling, help, help, help. And the guy in the back says, take your finger off the button so somebody can answer. You know, help. And there's someone flying over another, I guess a Japan airline or something was flying above that. And they often fly over when they go from New York to go over Anchorage, Alaska, on a Japan. And the guy heard him. And he said, what's going on? The pilot's dead. We don't know how to fly this. They help. Help. You know. They don't know what they're doing. The guy says, I'm going to lose you in a few minutes, but don't touch anything. I'll get the tower. And he called the tower, and the tower says, what's going on? The pilot's dead, help! <laughs> Screaming like this, and they, they try to calm him down. He had, he had, you know how to fly this? No, I don't know how to fly this. <laughs> We're all going to be dead. The guy says, hold on, just don't touch anything. The plane's going, yeah, just, all right, so you know how to turn that little yoke? Yeah, I can turn the wheel. I can turn, yeah, don't turn it too hard. No. <laughs> you can see him on the radar. And they got somebody up there to talk him in calmly, talked him into landing an airplane that he never landed before. I'm saying that because God is up to something good. Now, it's not something I want to go through. <laughs> Never been there. I've had a plane, I, I was a pilot and my plane lost an engine on takeoff, but you know, you do everything you're supposed to do, and boom, 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 you check everything and it got through the checklist and they cut the engine started again. But this didn't happen. The plane just kept going on, it was flying around and they talked him into landing the airplane and got it back down on the ground. But friends, you know what, the, 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 the really scary part, it wasn't so much that the pilot was dead, is after they landed the plane and bounced down the runway and finally got the brakes stopped and got out of the, stopped the plane, the pilot was like this, and all of a sudden he looks at him and he says, what are you doing? The pilot came back to life. <laughs> Scared the heebie-jeebies out of him. <laughs> what happened, he has narcolepsy. And the pilot, you know, if someone has that, they're as good as dead, you don't even wake them up. I'm telling you that God is always up to something good in your life. Even if it's, you got a dead pilot. Even if it's COVID, God is up to something good. If you lost your job, you're going through a financial crisis, learn from it. Because God is up to something good. God is good to me even when I don't deserve it. Sometimes God has to do some pruning in your life. I think God's doing some pruning on our nation. The land of the home of the free and the brave, but we fast become the land of the rich and indulgent. And we threw away our moral compass thinking we can trust on our own fare that we paid and earned. Friends, God is good to me even when I don't deserve it, and God is doing some pruning in our life. When Satan attacks, Always focus on the fruit that God wants to develop in your life. Don't focus on the crisis you're going through. Focus on what God wants you to learn from that crisis. And God doesn't waste his bullets on anybody. He wants you to learn something. And sometimes you need to grow. And you need to step back and say, Lord, I'm, I'm listening. Tell me what you want to do because I don't want to go in an airplane with a dead pilot. Lord, help me to learn something first. God is in control of every detail of your life. 
and there is a purpose for everything. Friends, focus on the value you could add to someone else's life. You know someone's going through a crisis right now? Someone is going through a financial crisis? Wouldn't hurt to give them a bag of groceries. And now they deliver the groceries and they don't even have to know who sent it to them. Yeah, Thanksgiving came, went. And I love it when someone told me, he said, we know this family that had six kids and they're both unemployed and one of the kids got the COVID. And as we called up Walmart and had DoorDash go pick it up and deliver a week's worth of groceries. You're going through a crisis, focus on the value you can add to someone else's life during this time. Not what you lost. Jonah was focused on what it might cost him. Friends, it's not yours, it's God's anyways. Focus on what will last, not the short-lived. The Word of God and the people of God will last forever. Focus on God's plan, even if it doesn't fit your plan. And this wasn't part of my plan being outside today. <laughs> this is not our plan, but it's part of God's plan. And focus on what God wants you. Focus on not just the temporal, but focus on the eternal. Don't get yourself discouraged. Moses cried out. You know, he's with 600,000 Jews in a homeless shelter running around in an Egyptian desert, running around, and, and you could focus on that. It didn't fit his plan. Friends, focus on God's plan even if it doesn't fit your plan. Moses asked God to kill him during that time. Elijah, when he was out there in the wilderness, he said, I want to die. And of course, Jonah cries out here and later on in another chapter, he cries out, I just want to die. Just take my life. I want to go down in the belly of the whale. I just want to get it over with. I don't want to go over here to Nineveh. Friends, I learned this. You don't tell God what to do. God has a way of getting your attention. Don't let Satan blind you to the positive good that God wants in your life. God can always do something bigger than your circumstances. Unemployed, the finances are low, business is about ready to go under. Hey, God's got something bigger than just your circumstances. And God has consequences, doesn't he? The presence of God changes everything in our trials. Any change I want must start with the way I think. Which way are you thinking? <laughs> Someone, and how I say this kindly, but stinking thinking leads to stinking living. Jonah got some pretty bad thinking because he left God out of it. And he found himself down in the belly of the whale in the mess of the world. You're either conformed by the world or you're going to be transformed. Friends, what we need today is we need a checkup from the neck up. What God wants for us. Jonah was dis distorted the problem. Number two, Jonah was disillusioned about the answer. Because Jonah relied on frail protection. You don't want to go God's way, but you got your plan, and your plan isn't as good as God's plan. But you think it is. You can talk yourself right into it. Be careful what you say to yourself in times of discouragement, because you can talk yourself right out of God's mess into the world's mess. And that's what Jonah did. He relied on false protection, a sinking ship. Are you trusting your own security? Are you trusting your stocks and bonds, your job, your social security check? The FDIC that's going to insure all this trillions of dollars the government doesn't have? I, what are you trusting in? Your career? A work salvation? Friends, we must trust in the Lord our God. So easy to think, look, all these things. Look, I, I got a 401k plan, and if I lose my job, I can make it six months or a year or two years or so on like that. The Social Security is going to take care of me when I get 65. Wait a minute, friends. <laughs> You see how much money the government is in debt? One trillion goes around to worth, what, 30,000 times? If I took one trillion inches, 
You know how many times that is? I mean, you look at the de debtclock.com on the website and you'll see, unbelievable where we are. I'm not going to trust in the uncertain riches of this life. I want to trust in God. We're not to trust our own self for our salvation. Some of us got our own plans. I'm a good person, but good people don't go to, always go to heaven. Because you can say you're good to yourself, but being good doesn't, when you're saying you're being good and your goodness is going to get you to heaven, you're relying on what you have done rather than what God has done for you. You need to trust Jesus Christ today. Not what you have done. You know, I can get baptized every tadpole fish in America knows my name and social security number. You know, I get baptized that many times, but baptism didn't save anybody. Nor does our good works, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to God's mercy, He saved us. We need to trust God. Friends, God is very effective. God is very effective in pointing out your rebellion. He knows where you are. He can do anything he wants to get your attention. And I pray it will never happen when you're flying at 29,000 feet and the pilot goes dead. But God knows what it takes to get your attention. And God's knocking at your door. Why don't you let God have first place? This could be the last time you hear God speak into your heart. Because God doesn't keep knocking and keep knocking. How many times does someone have to knock at your door before you answer? Well, sometimes you want to ignore just another salesman. But if they keep knocking after 15 minutes, they keep knocking, eventually you say, I'm going to answer the door. How many times does God have to knock at your door to get your attention? Jonah was disillusioned about the answer. He distorted the problem. And number three, his decision affected others. Your decisions always affect someone else. I'm glad in our family, and I look at our family tree, five generations of preachers. Why? Because someone in 1860 said yes to God. And then they had a son in 1890s, and they said yes to God. And they had a son in, in 1916 that said yes to God. And they had a, a daughter that was in the 1950s that said yes to God. And now we have children saying yes to God. All because someone made a decision way back when. Friends, you can't trust your feelings. You must trust God. Jonah, quit looking up. Friends, if you look up, you can get delighted. If you look around you, you can get discouraged. Or you can look within and get, if you look within, you get discouraged. You look around you, you can get distracted. I can get sure get distracted looking at all the things around us and all the circumstances everybody's going around us and say, God is not there. God is here. And God wants our attention. Don't trust your feelings. If you do, you'll talk yourself right out of God's best into the world's mess. How come you're getting divorced? Well, we can't stand at each other. You know, nobody gets divorced because they can't stand each other. They get divorced because they get bitter toward each other. That's the root, root of it all, bitterness. You can talk yourself right into a mess, and generation after generation comes divorce homes. So often it repeats itself. I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm saying, put God first in your home, and maybe you can turn this thing around and give it a second chance. Your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Don't follow your heart. Follow the Bible. There's our answer right here. Anytime you make a major decision, follow Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Says, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. How about saying, God, I want your direction, not my direction. Don't make your decisions in life on, based on feelings. Hey, here's some facts right here. The Word of God. What does God want? The Bible tells us to wait upon the Lord, and He shall renew your strength. Don't let yourself get ahead of God. I've seen too many young people. They're, my preacher used to say there's so many young people that they're like a Timex watch. 
in a Timex, well, boy, this one's really a good one here. It, the clock is wrong. Um, <laughs> it loses about 10 minutes a day now. <laughs> Battery's going dead. But the people, are, 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 some of the people like the Timex watch. Tick, 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 tick. Get together quick, get together quick, get, get together quick, get together quick. And my preacher said, be like the old grandpa clock. Take your time. Take your time. Tell that to someone who's 18 years old, thinks they know everything. Tell that to some parents who want things right now and they want instant gratification and want everything to turn out, but don't want to take the time to give God first. Put God first in your family and see what God will do. Jonah put himself first and he found himself in the vomit of the world, down in a mess. Friends, wait upon the Lord. He shall renew your strength. He shall mount up with wings of eagles and run and not be weary. Ask God for forgiveness for those times that you didn't listen to him. When your attitude is wrong, friends, there's something in aviation. There's a pilot. There's something called attitude. Now, attitude, that's the angle on which the airplane flies. If you've got a nose-high attitude, you're going up. If you've got a nose-low attitude, you're going down. So when I say this, your attitude determines your altitude. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Your attitude, the angle in which the plane flies, determines your altitude. And sometimes our attitude in life has determined our altitude where we've gone in life. How about putting God first in your attitude? God was merciful to Jonah and gave him a second chance. And Jonah had a second chance to walk with God and to work for God today. What we need today is we need to turn around and say, Lord, I want you first. Thank God God's a man of a second chance. And all of us can have that second chance if we just turn to him. Our nation is having a second chance because this whole ship could have gone under. And this thing could have been a whole lot worse. And who knows if some, some for wicked reason, someone out there might decide this is the way to take control of the earth. Let's get everybody sick. Who knows what goes on? I just know that I better be right with God no matter what comes. Jonah finally went back and had a great revival in Nineveh. Friends, say yes. Say yes to God. It's me, O oh Lord, it's me, O oh Lord, who's standing in need of prayer. Sitting down, sometimes we're, we're sitting down on the outside, but sitting down on the outside is not enough. We need to step up and tell God, I'm coming home. I'm surrendering to Him. Would you surrender to Jesus Christ today and give Him first place in your life? Don't limit God with what He can do for you. God needed Jonah to turn around. Jonah was pretty discouraged when he asked God just to kill him. He literally committed suicide, tried to commit suicide. He'd rather be dead. He didn't realize the riches that God had for him if he put just God first. Would you turn to Jesus Christ today and say, Lord, here I am. Let's pray.